boy, here we go again. Maybe. Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, Ozzy, and I hope you are all doing well. I really do hope that, my friends, namaste. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series here, of course, on Football Therapy, where I go across football news media, see what's being said about the Blues, giving you my opinion, but hey, more importantly, asking for yours. The Sun released an article there about a British Super League. No, this is not a troll, and I'm going to take you through it and speculate on a couple of things and ask your opinion on Rangers and Celtic and, indeed, the powers that be. In football. And also, could Keparitha Belaga slowly be making his way back to number one first choice goalkeeper? Is that Thomas Tuchel's prerogative? Interesting question there. If you want to keep up to date, informed of all this Chelsea news, make sure you do subscribe to this channel of Football Therapy and have that all important bell notifications icon switched on. If you want to show your sweet, loving, kind, warm embrace and support, please do drop a like on this video. And also, come completely free, you should check out OneFootball, my friends. That's right, my partner for Chelsea News is OneFootball, the totally and entirely free application on your phone or on, you know, the website. It gives you everything you'll ever need to know about football matches, your club team, your international team, general news, international news when it comes to the beautiful game, or the one everybody likes, transfer news. I use it on the regs, one football, and you can too, my friends. Click the link down in the description. Go check it out for absolutely free now. All right, then, let's get into the first story of today and talk about Keparitha Balaga. Now, I didn't get this particularly from any news article. I was listening to the Athletic podcast straight out of Cobham and journalist from The Athletic, Liam Twomey, speculated about Keparitha Balaga slowly making his way back as the first choice. Now I've been working my way back to first choice. Gonna try and bench Edward Mandy. Sorry about that. Interesting, eh? It is really interesting when you think about it because Tuchel has been sort of like sneaking him in here and there, not just for cup games, which, you know, you, you, some cup games you're like, whoa, come on, we're at the end game now, Tuchel. Why are you putting Kepa in there? But Premier League games as well, just here and there. Bang, bang, Kepa, Kepa. Didn't expect to see him. Kepa, he's there. Whoa. I think he's kept clean sheets in pretty much all his games as well. It is interesting. Now, listen, let's think about this for a moment in terms of player profile. Edouard Mendy is a very good goalkeeper and he's superb at coming out and commanding in the air, claiming balls. The exact attribute Kepa is generally and generally always has been bad at, which is a really important trait you need in the Premier League and Kepa doesn't have. But we know Kepa is capable of excellent shot stopping, we saw it under Sari, and theoretically he's an excellent ball playing goalkeeper. One of the main reasons we paid his buyout clause after scouting him for a little while to get him to Chelsea for Maurizio Sari because of Sari ball or Sarismo passing the ball around a lot. Now that is a lot like Thomas Tuchel's football, defencing, defencing, defending in possession, a goalkeeper that can come out, play triangles quickly and indeed have good long accuracy and do sweet. Weeping. Theoretically, Kepa can do all of that. And something that Liam Toomey speculated on this podcast is it would be maybe an incentive of Thomas Tuchel, Marina Grand of Sky, the Chelsea board. This is their record signing. This is a asset that's depreciated so radically that they will be very, very interested in him not only playing more and gaining value again, but actually and potentially becoming Chelsea's number one. That might be an incentive of the board. There might be an element of his player profile suits this type of football. But how do we as fans feel? A little bit scared. I don't think anyone particularly dislikes Kepper. I think there's a, a general understanding that he suffered from a major uh, confidence crisis. Uh, Lampard, you know, shifting around the defence in front of him is never going to help. You need that continuity. So all of that together, I don't think there's any bad feelings towards Kepa. And if you watch Football Therapy, you'll know that I've always maintained that I think he's a very talented goalkeeper. But saying that, where does that leave Edouard Mendy, who hasn't really put a foot wrong, has made some excellent saves, seems like a lovely character within the dressing room, and like I said, always comes out and commands in the box, which is really important. And I know this shouldn't matter, but I like it. He's got a really nice story. Like, you know, only a few years ago, he's in the job centre. Now he's, you know, number one for Chelsea Football Club. I really like it, and I really like Mendy. So it's an interesting one, but right now, 
now, I'm just going to be like, look man, ultimately we have two goalkeepers that are different in profile, but they're both very good. Let's just see what happens. Right, I'm going to be citing the crap rag next to the sun, so let's talk about this British Super League. Indeed, just as there's a fallout of the European Super League and the absolute enemy of football, Florentino Perez has been coming out speaking ever since. I'm not going to talk about that because it makes me feel ill, as does he. The sun released a story regarding a plan in the background for a structured British Super League that would bring in Rangers and Celtic into the English football pyramid. Now, now, this wouldn't be the first time some neighbours joined the English football pyramid. A long, long, long time ago, both Cardiff and Swansea joined, and they've been in ever since. Bearing in mind there is a Welsh football league now, but we have the two big cities, Swansea and Cardiff, in the English football league pyramid. Similarly, it would be bringing in Rangers and Celtic. Now, this is not going to be good. It would theoretically destroy Scottish football, but I'm going to read you through the Sun article now, which let's just put, a, you know, a pinch of salt, no, let's put a ton of salt on all this before we read it, but you know, it's in the headlines and that's what I do, I bring it to you. So let's read through some now. Celtic and Rangers are wanted to join a all British league as part of the fallout from the failed Euro breakaway plot. While the big six led a humiliating retreat from the Super League debacle, they remain convinced that a reform of the Prem is essential. The potential British Premier League is expected to get the green light from both FIFA and UEFA. Top of the list of plans being actively discussed is to offer the two Glasgow Giants to come south of Hadrian's Wall. Well, in terms of uh, box office narrative exposure, it would bring all of that. The thing is, Rangers and Celtic are massive clubs up way up north. <laughs> up north, north of the border. Massive, massive rivalry. The old firm rivalry now, that's a potent football culture. Uh, I'm going to give you my opinion on it and the opinion of what it would mean for fo Scottish football in just a moment. Let's read on. And unlike the Super League shambles, which was condemned globally, it's likely an enlarged Premier League, including the old firm, would be backed by FIFA, UEFA and the UK government. Celtic and Rangers would jump at the chance to take a slice of the Prem cake with their inclusion would also see a spike in interest from fans from across the world, sponsors and broadcasters. Even the Scottish Premier League rivals have thought they are likely to be willing to wave goodbye to the two dominant forces north of the border because it would give them a realistic chance of winning the title and a chance to qualify for the revamped Champions League. One club source says whether or not the Super League was going to happen, we all feel like the Premier League has to be changed and improved. Right, the article goes on for some time, I'm not going to get into that. Firstly, it would ruin Scottish football financially, and yes, perhaps uh, rival clubs might think, well, they've had a monopoly over this league, no one ever else wins the league title, now there's a chance, viewing figures would drastically die, therefore the financial stuff would go down. And it goes on, look, I, I personally, there's always been this like theoretic, because they are in the United Kingdom, this is not a European thing, and you know, you, you, you look at the Premier League, Scottish League, you see what's happening, even though no one really watches the Scottish Premier League. There's a very naive, uneducated, and cynical part of me, which I'm going to push away, that would be like, I actually quite like Celtic and Rangers in the Premier League. See, we'll you know, test them, the old firm derby in the Premier League. Ooh, that would be exciting. But the truth is, it would do more bad than good for the Scottish League out there and probably the Premier League. It's, I'm gonna go on, apparently th it's not just including those two massive clubs. It like, you know, cause it's easy to say, oh, it's just like bringing Cardiff and Swansea in, bring those big guys in. You know, the United Kingdom products, brilliant. Nothing wrong with that. But it comes with too much damage. And after this fall, that would be, you know, hypocritical of me to, to suggest this is a good idea. And the article goes on, the proposal goes on that we'll actually have a, the Premier League will come into a playoff structure. And I don't think that sits right with me. It, it becomes franchise within the United Kingdom. So I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna put any like serious comment on this or opinion because I think it's probably nonsense. Although a lot of people uh, on social media, I can't, sorry if you've said this and you're watching this video, I can't quote you, but a few people said it. They talked about a British cup, which I was really interested in. So maybe replace the league cup with a British Cup. So, you know, still in the United Kingdom, um, instead of the Carabao Cup, you have the uh, British uh, League Cup where, you know, Celtic and Rangers, and maybe like Hibs and some other like Scottish teams and uh, a Welsh team and Irish team or something. Do you know what I mean? 
all come together and try and do well in the cup. Integrate them a little bit. You know, send Rangers or um, Celtic to Stamford Bridge for a British Cup game. That's a good idea. And I looked at that and I was like, well done to whoever suggested that. Seemingly, that's okay for everyone. I think. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'd be keen to hear your thoughts, feelings and opinions on Kepa and Scottish football joining English football. Yeah, get down there, comment, drop a like if you've enjoyed today's video. Okay, you know what? Go follow me on Instagram. I've been incredibly active on there over the past few days and you might want to connect more with me. So you have an opportunity to do so there at Football Yannick on Instagram. Other than that, I'm out, my sweet friends. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.